What a day it has been so far today in the stock market, guys. We've seen the Dow Jones fall nearly 800 points. The NASDAQ was down about 200 points. And the S&P was down about 75 points. Points. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about what is pushing the market down after we finally got some decent news this past weekend about the G20 summit with President Trump and, you know, the president of China coming to an agreement to halt the tariffs for 90 days, keeping them at 10%. So just as we got this decent news, just as we had a little sigh of relief, the market today stabbed us in the back. We're down about 3% overall in the entire markets, you know, at the worst, at the low of today, which was about 20 minutes ago. And at the time that I'm recording this video, we do have about an hour and 50 minutes left in the overall market. So we could potentially get even worse from where we are right now. So before I do get into the market update, before I do talk about the one trade that I made today, for those of you guys that are new viewers out there, my name is Stas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that are interested in learning more about that and following along with my journey and our whole entire community, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be in contact with me and about 315 other investors and and traders join that discord group chat guys we're talking about trading investing stocks you know news strategies and just helping each other and networking with each other on a day-to-day -day basis and again all those are linked especially the discord is all linked down below in the description box so what happened today in the overall stock market. So over this past weekend, we obviously know that Trump and the president of China came to a conclusion to, you know, halt the, uh, you know, halt the rates or halt the tariffs and keep them at 10% for the next 90 days. And this was a sigh of relief, like I said, for all traders, all investors, and the market actually acted pretty positively to this yesterday. If we see here to the Dow Jones, guys, we had a pretty solid day yesterday. I think we were up about 500 points, you know, pre-market hours. The futures were up 500 points for the Dow. I believe the S&P was up about 30, 40 points. And, you know, the NASDAQ was up about what was it, like 100, 120 points? And then, you know, that was a pretty positive reaction to what happened. And then yesterday, you know, since that peak up in the morning, we pretty much ended off the day pretty flat in terms of, you know, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. So what went down today to make this massive, massive drop in the overall markets occur? Well, I did some research and I found an article here that pretty much is talking about how the bond market is signaling to economic slowdown over the next couple of, uh, you know, year pretty much, right? Over the next couple of quarters, growth is slowing down. So before before we do hop into you know the technicals of the Dow, the S&P, the Nasdaq, and what I personally traded today, let's talk about this article. Oh, what is this, guys? Oh my God! Flash update? No. Later. I want to see my article. Where's this article? Oh my God! I'll be right back, guys. I'll be right back. So pretty much in this article, we see the Dow falls 700 points as stock rally fizzles amid. Growth worries, skepticism over trade truce. And I'm sorry about all of these ads, guys. Oh my God, this is pissing me off. But, you know, the stocks fell sharply on Tuesday as investors worried about a bond market phenomenon signaling a possible economic slowdown. Lingering worries around U.S.-China trade also sent jitters down Wall Street. And I pretty much talked about this yesterday, guys. You know, that little glimpse of relief that we did get from the U.S. and from the China, uh, you know, 
trade war and the tariffs, this shouldn't be, you know, a single reason that you should be very happy about what's going on, right? You should still be a little bit skeptical because at the end of the day, they did not come down to a real conclusion just yet. So this was just a very short term, uh, very short term sign of some optimism, right? But again, you know, very short term, right? I talked about this in yesterday's video, very, very short term here. And the long term picture is still in depth. Out, there's still a lot of uncertainty surrounding what is going on. So at around 1.30 p.m., about 30, 45 minutes ago from the time that I'm recording this video, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down more than 700 points, led by losses in Apple, which I actually just picked up a couple of shares today in Apple because I missed my opportunity uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago when Apple was down to about 170 so I picked up some shares at about 177 today. Just a couple of shares, guys, just to add to my long-term portfolio. But, you know, shares of Apple dropped 4.1%. Like I said, I added some shares to that. The S&P declined 2.7% as the financials sector lagged. A bunch of the bank stocks are down pretty big today. I think Goldman, Goldman Sachs was down about 3%, uh, 3.54% today. The yield on the three-year treasury note surpassed its five-year counterpart on Monday. When a so-called yield curve inversion happens, short-term yields trading above longer-term rates, a recession could follow, though it is often years away after the single signal triggers. Long-term rates fell to session lows around midday in New York, while short-term yields were little changed. Further fears of economic slowdown were stoked by weaker than expected quarterly guidance from Toll Brothers. And Toll Brothers, that's a home builder for those of you guys that don't know. The company issued its forecast for the first quarter. Toll Brothers also pointed to negative reports about the housing market as the cause for the slowdown. New home sales have fallen for 11 straight months. Doubt about permanent deal between the U.S. and China crept into investors' minds following a stellar rally in the previous session, which is yesterday. The U.S. and China agreed over the weekend. Okay, we talked about this. They're not going to be doing additional tariffs for a couple of more months. The new cent stock surging on Monday. We talked about that. Bottom line, yesterday's price action further confirmed that while clearly there has been some important macro clarity provided, we need to see more before we can expect the S&P 500 to make a serious challenge to old highs. Isn't this exactly what I was saying in yesterday's video, guys? I was literally talking about this, right? What we saw with China and Trump is good, but we still need to see some more from that. We need to see a further conclusion from that before we can even test the highs of the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. So that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about for from this article. Growth is slowing down. The housing market has fallen 11 straight months in terms of sales, you know, and the bond market is slowly pointing towards an economic downturn. So if you guys want to watch this or uh, do some more research on this, I highly suggest you guys do that. But let's hop into here and see what's going on in terms of these technicals for the major markets. So the Dow Jones, guys, we were talking about how it was holding above this 180 SMA in yesterday's session, but now we clearly see that it broke below that, and now it's breaking below the 50 SMA. So with the two days uh, of this week of trading, Monday and Tuesday, we noticed that this actually has been a rejection point rather than a support point. So if you asked me yesterday in terms of the technicals, I would have told you that this was a consolidation point for the Dow Jones, but it actually ended up turning out to be a rejection point. So we consolidated here as, as a support level for a little bit yesterday, but clearly we got rejected there today due to the massive uh, you know news that we got in terms of the bond market, all the stuff that I just talked about. So we're breaking below the 50 SMA as of now. And pretty much, guys, what this trend is telling me in terms of the 184-hour chart here is that we're just continuing these lower highs that the Dow Jones is pretty much has been forming, right? We topped off at 27K. We topped off here at about 26,200. And now we topped off here at about 25,800. So to be honest with you all, I wouldn't be surprised if the Dow Jones would just continue this, uh, you know, downtrending pattern to make a low 
lower low like it has been over the past couple of uh, weeks, right? Lower low here, lower low here, lower low here. And if it does continue that, I wouldn't be surprised. So, you know, until this trade war, until these tariffs really do clear up, I don't expect that we're going to be out of this correction. And I've been talking about this over the past several months, guys, that I do believe the correction is still in place. I do believe that there's more downside uh, in the market over the next couple of months, which is just going to open up buying opportunities for the long-term investors like myself and a bunch of you guys out there that are watching. So me personally, guys, I don't really mind a correction because I'm still trading in and out of inverse ETFs, ETFs that go up when the markets go down, you know, so I'm making money either way and I'm just adding money into my long-term positions as the overall markets are selling off. So I'm viewing this as a win-win situation because again, I'm a short-term trader as well as a long-term investor. So any, any buying opportunities that I'm seeing Right now, I'm taking advantage of them for the long term. Like I said, I added shares in Apple today. I picked up some shares in Facebook the past week at about 132. So I'm not really mad about this, guys. So, so S&P 500, let's take a look what's going on here. So very similar here, guys. It looks like we peaked out at that 180 SMA resistance that we were talking about in yesterday's video. I was talking about how, you know, the resistance for the S&P is going to be right around here at $2,800, right under the 180 SMA, with the next one being at about 2820 So it looks like we did get rejected right here, and now we're sending down. Uh, we're pushing down. We're slightly holding above this 50 SMA right here, guys. But again, I still see some downside in the markets. And if this news does linger around the markets, for the next couple of weeks, next couple of trading days. There's definitely going to be some more downside. I definitely think we could potentially break below here and, you know, test this next, uh, you know, test this next support at about 26 40. So in terms of the S&P guys right now, we're down about 2.3%, down about 66 points. The worst it was at today, I believe was at about 2,700, which was a, a uh, loss of about, let's see, Close to 3%, a little bit higher than 3% from the close yesterday at about 2790. So not looking too great, guys, in terms of the S&P. Same thing here with the NASDAQ, guys. We see it's down about 175, down about 2.5% right now. The lowest it was down was at about 6809, which was a pretty big drop from the close of yesterday. And I do believe, what was that, 6809? We're at about 6880 right now. So the lowest it was at was at about... Uh, that, that gives it about a 250 point loss at about 3.3% from the lowest at low of the day, pretty much, right? So markets are getting crushed today. I personally did not expect us to have this bad of a day today, but again, excuse me, we can't predict what happens in the stock market. We really just can't do it, guys, right? It, it's impossible. No one knows what's going to happen. We just have to play it by ear. T see the technicals, what's going on in the macro, uh, you know, in the macro economy, what's going on in these businesses, what is going on with the guidance, what's going on with the earnings. That is what's really going to dictate what's going on around in the overall stock market, right? So NASDAQ, Dow, S&P are getting crushed today. So let's talk about what trade I made today. One trade in ticker symbol DRIP. And I shouted this one out in the group chat. Again, links down below in the description box, in the Discord group chat. And I traded this one pretty much off the bounce here on the 180-day simple moving average. And for those of you guys that don't know, DRIP is an inverse ETF. Its inverse is GUSH, ticker symbol G-U-S-H. And these two trade based upon XOP. And pretty much whenever XOP, guys, is going up in price, that's when GUSH is going up in price, the inverse to DRIP. But when XOP is going down in price, that's when DRIP is going up in price. So when I noticed that, Pretty much when drip was going down today, early market hours, it pretty much shopped down all the way to 33.53. We pushed back up here, and I believe I entered drip right around here, guys, in terms of XOP. And I'll show you how it correlates over to drip. But when I noticed that, you know, this one was pushing down today, that gave me the uh, the notion that okay, today could possibly be a good day to trade drip. So I got in here. 
Not here, actually. I waited for the bounce here, and that was a higher low from the previous low. And once we bounced here and broke above this 50 simple moving average on the one-day, one-minute chart, that's when I took my position at about $10.01. And I actually ended up selling off at $10.40 on this dip here. I actually did not get as much profit as I could have, guys. But again, profit is profit. I'm happy with whatever amount of profit I personally can get. So I missed the sell entry of uh, the sell point here and once we broke below this uh 50 sma here on the one day one minute i just took my profits at about ten dollars and forty cents on ticker symbol drip giving me from ten dollars and one cents up to 1040 let's see what that gave me right close to about a four percent trade on drip and my daily goal is about three to five percent and anything in that range i'm ecstatic with so i hit four percent on one trade which means that i'm done trading for the day because once i hit my goal guys i don't try to get even more right because at that point i could potentially lose money which would put me below my goal so pretty much when i hit my goal i'm done trading for the day so i was done trading at about noon today guys once i took those profits a little bit later than noon at about 12 45 eastern standard time and you know i've just been talking in the group chat you know conversing with all you guys and uh you know just talking about what's been going down today which has been absolutely crazy in my personal opinion and uh you know it's just opening up long-term opportunities for those of you guys that believe in american business and believe in the stock market as a whole which i think you know i personally think and warren buffett has a very similar strategy and i heard gary v talking about this as well for those of you guys that watch gary v i watch him from time to time he's a very great uh businessman very great uh motivational speaker mentor in my personal opinion he talks talks about this one factor right if you believe in american business and if you believe that american business is here to stay and it's going to and it's going to continue to grow then you should be putting money into stocks right if you think american business is here for the long run you should be investing in stocks pretty much if you believe that uh, or, or or you know American business isn't going anywhere, guys, unless we have a ridiculous Great Depression like we had in the 40s. You know, not, no one's going to lose a lot of money investing in stocks, especially if you hold for at least 10 15, 20 years. You know, we're going to have a recession, whether that be in one year, three years, or five years. But once that recession hits, guys, we're going to lose about 30, 40% in the market, whatever ends up happening. But every time we've had a recession, we've ended up bouncing back to new highs in the overall market. So I'm not worried whatsoever, guys. If we do end up having a recession, all I'm going to be doing is buying more shares and uh, just holding for the long term, right? So uh, you know, that's what ended up happening today, guys. I traded drip. That's really all I was in. TVIX had a very big day, guys. Oh my God. I wish I actually traded TVIX. But again, like I said, I was not expecting the market to fall this hard today. But we see TVIX consolidated pretty much until 12 o'clock. And at 12 o'clock, it's like unbelievable what happened we shot up like a rocket guys look at this chart from four thirty six dollars literally in a matter of like what is this 11 50 a.m from 36 dollars up to 42 dollars in literally 40 minutes guys that's like a that's like a 13 percent 15 percent trade in 13 minutes in, in 30 minutes that's absolutely ridiculous so shout out to everyone in the group shout out to everyone watching that was able to trade ticker symbol tvix today very very high flying etf uh today right so what am I going to be watching tomorrow in the overall stock market? Well, in terms of swing trading, guys, I'm not looking to swing trade anything right now. The market is way too volatile for my liking in terms of swing trading. So I'm going to be sticking to what I've been doing over the past two months, which has been mostly day trading. Uh, you know, the market ETFs, which is TVIX, TQQQ, as well as QQQ, as well as, you know, Drip, Gush, UGAS, DGAS. These have been treating me very well over the past couple of months while the whole stock market has been flying like this, right? Up, down, up, down, up, down. So for those of you guys that have been following me for a while now, you know that 
You know, about a year ago when I started the channel, I was a big swing trader because at that point, guys, the market wasn't as volatile as it was now. It was pretty much just going up, little dips here, up, little dips here, up. And, you know, that opened up great opportunities for swing trading, right? But now that the market's going like this, you know, it's very hard to, to you know, get into a swing trade and hold it for a week or two because a lot of these stocks are, are just too crazy and the charts are not looking great for swing trading, right? I've been talking about this in a couple of videos now. You know, let's just take a look at some tech stocks, right? Facebook, you know, why would you want to swing trade Facebook, right? Not look looking good whatsoever. Apple, not looking good whatsoever. You know, Netflix, not looking good whatsoever. Google, looking terrible in terms of technicals. Microsoft, actually Microsoft's not looking that bad. You know, if we're able to hold above here, that would be an absolutely great play in terms of Microsoft. But, you know, that's pretty much my philosophies and thoughts right now. I'm going to be mostly day trading, mostly playing these inverse ETFs, these market ETFs, until we get some more uh, direction and where the overall markets are going. Because, you know, taking a look back at this Dow Jones chart, we're pretty much trading horizontally right now. You know, we can potentially, you know, swing trade stocks. Let's say if the Dow Jones gets here and we bounce here. In terms of this 24, 500 support, let's say we do get here, guys, and we end up bouncing and we slowly start to push up. That does open about a two, three, four day swing trade window, in my personal opinion. But until that happens, guys, I'm not really going to be swing trading stocks. Again, I'm going to be mostly focusing on day trading. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys are trading in terms of stocks, ETFs. Whatever you guys are trading out there, I would love to know. And drop a comment down below. Let me know what videos you would like me to, to cover, right? What would you want me to make a video on? If there's any spe specific requests, special requests, I would love to make a video for you guys out there. Whatever you guys want me to talk about, I'll make a video on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's see what happens, guys. The markets are falling even more from when I started this video. Let's just see what happens these next hour, this next hour and a half. I'm very excited to see. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join the Discord as well as the Facebook. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.